Hello, my name is Norbert Kaminski, and today I will tell you about porting FWPD to the BSD operating systems. Um, that means keeping your hardware safe with up-to-date firmware. Let's start with agenda. Uh, at the beginning, I will tell you how am I, then I will tell you some words about FreeMDEP and place where I, uh, where I work. Uh, then I will go to some overall information about FWPD. Um, I will show you uh, architecture of FWPD. I will say some words about Linux vendor firmware service. Uh, and then I will go to porting a WPD to the BSDs. Mm, I will show you how we create uh, continuous integration for a WPD in the FreeBSD. Um, and uh, at the end of my presentation, I will tell you about FWBT, uh, FWPD features. Um, at the end of my presentation, there will be space for some questions and answers. Okay, so who am I? My name is Norbert Kaminski. I'm Embedded System Engineer at FreeMDEP. Uh, I'm open source contributor mostly in FWPD and UACTL layers like uh, Meta PC engines. In my scope of interest are uh, firmware upgrade tools, uh, virtualization and uh, firmware security. And you can catch me under these links. Okay, who is FreeMDAP? Uh, we are com uh, core boot lines as service providers since 2016. Uh, we are co uh, core boot project leadership participants. Uh, we are UFI adopters since 2018, and we are official consultants for FWPD LVFS project. And also we are open source firmware enthusiasts and evangelists. Okay, uh, so why we are doing this part? Why we are doing FWPD for BSD? Um, from one side, our clients were asking us if there is easy and secure way to upgrade the firmware in the BSDs. Uh, from the other way, the community were asking us uh, if there is possibility to um, to port FWPD to the uh, BSD. And uh, we've connected this uh, community needs and our clients' needs, and we've created the project FWPD for BSDs. Uh, and uh, that project is founded by an Allnet Foundation. So, some words about FWPD. As you can know, uh, outdated firmware uh, makes devices vulnerable to the different attacks. Uh, but uh, there are a few problems when you want to upgrade your firmware on your device. Uh, you need to know exactly what device is connected to the uh, to the to your PC, and you need to know if there are uh, possible updates uh, for this device and uh, what version do you need. And here comes the FWPD project, which can query the supported hardware for current firmware version, and also it can deploy the new firmware ver version to the device. And uh, we've got all the LVFS, that is a secure web service, which uh, delivers the new firmware uh, to our PC. And, uh, OMS uh, can upload the firmware to uh, to the LVFS and uh, sign it uh, to make it uh, secure and um, to give a, a client or customer or just user uh, sureness that firmware is secure. And our mission is to port the FWPD to the BSDs to make the firmware update process easier uh, for the BSD community. Okay, here we've got uh, FWPD LVFS architecture. Mm, it could be split into three layers. We've got internal layer, session layer, and system layer. Uh, in the internal layer, we've got LVFS uh, where the firmware is stored. Uh, and we've got uh, content delivery network. 
which delivers the uh, Farmer TV session layer. Uh, in this session layer, uh, here lives F FWPD Manager, which handles all the process of the Farmer update. Uh, and the LVFS um, delivers the information about uh, the possible updates and uh, firmware information. Um, and uh, FWPD Manager contacts with FWPD Daemon, which uses uh, plugin to uh, query the devices and know uh, information about current uh, current devices connected to your PC or and a version of uh, firmware that is running on these devices. Uh, so typical uh, update process looks like this. Uh, we are just uh, sending a comment to the FWPD manager. FWPD manager is checking what, uh, what devices uh, are connected. Uh, then um, it's uh, checking if there is uh, information about possible updates in the LVFS. Uh, if there are possible updates, uh, it's downloading with the content delivery network a, um, a firmware and uh, it's checking the signatures, GPG and PKS7 and checksum. Uh, if everything is as expected, uh, the firmware is unpacked and sent to the uh, FWPD daemon and uh, FWPD daemon is deploying the firmware to our devices. Okay, so uh, now we've got Linux vendor firmware service. Uh, let's talk uh, much more about uh, about it. Uh, as you can see, we we've got here Linux, and uh, we have to think about change uh, of this uh, name because uh, it's not only the Linux; it's starting to be BSD as well. Um, but let's talk more about uh, service, not uh, about the name. Uh, the LVFS is a secure web service uh, that is used by the OME uh, to provide uh, firmware updates. Mm, the LVFS is providing metadata about uh, possible updates to the LWPD manager. And uh, the firmware is packed into uh, cabinet archives. Uh, cabinet archives contains the firmware binary and uh, information about the update and um, it also have JCAT file uh, which is used to verify if uh, firmware update is secure. Uh, JCAP file contains uh, signature, uh, PKS7 and GPG, and also it has um, um, it has information about uh, SHA-256 uh, uh, checksum. Um, and uh, if everything uh, is correct, we can update uh, our device. Uh, the only one who is signing the farmer is manufacturer, so we are not trusting the FWPD. Uh, we are trusting the manufacturer who is deploying the farmer. Okay, so let's talk about BSD and uh, compilation of FWPD on BSDs. Um, on this slide, I will focus uh, on the packages, uh, packaging systems. Um, we focused uh, on four BSD uh, operating systems, Dragonfly BSD, FreeBSD, NetBSD, and OpenBSD. Uh, initially, we wanted to create one package source package for all uh, operating systems. Uh, following the documentation uh, of package source, it declares support for each operating system, but um, after the uh, concept works, uh, we met uh, dependency hell and we've decided to create four different packages using the native package managers of each operating system.
so what we need to do to create the port of um, FWPD for BSDs. At first, we need to create the port of uh, FWPD uh, dependencies. Uh, we've got a uh, GUSB library, which is a uh, glib um, wrapper for libusb. We've got libjcat, uh, which is library um, that contains uh, the tools to verify our uh, firmware. Uh, we've got a XMLB library, which uh, add the support for um, additional uh, commands that is need to use with uh, XML in FWPD. And we've got uh, an FI boot uh, library, which is used to UFI uh, firmware update proposals. Okay, so we've got uh, all dependencies which we need. Then uh, we go to um, FWPD code. So we need to change the Linux. Uh, we need it uh, to change Linux related parts of code. Mm, that was mostly adding the uh, if devs uh, to the code, but um, some parts, specific parts of codes need to be changed. Uh, into the way, um, into BSD way. Okay, and the last step of uh, adaptation was um, adaptation of the FWPD plugins to the BSD needs. Uh, I will tell you more about this uh, on the future slides. Okay, so current status of work. Mm, we have created uh, FWT, FWPD packages for all four operating systems. Um, and FreeBSD package is now currently uh, during the upstream process and the rest of the packages will be upstream in the near future. Um, our initial goal was to develop the FWPD functionalities in the FreeBSD. And our next steps will be in testing FWPD functionalities and solving the problems in Dragonfly BSD, uh, OpenBSD, and NetBSD as well. Okay, so uh, we uh, began our uh, development with creation of continuous integration. Uh, at the beginning of uh, our development, we've just used the mm, GitHub Action uh, FreeBSD virtual machine. Uh, continuous integration let us develop uh, new changes to the current of WPD code with the confidence that we do not break anything in the build process. Uh, so. We've used, as I said, a GitHub action to this propose. Um, and we've created the uh, job. And now I will uh, show you the demo. Um, OK, so uh, as you can see, we've got uh, GitHub, uh, uh, GitHub CI. And now we are downloading the uh, FreeBSD um, VirtualBox uh, VM. Uh, VM is loading. And uh, it, um, after VM, um, yeah, as, as you can see, we've got now uh, loaded VM. And uh, now we are installing the uh, dependencies for um, now is installing the, in the dependencies for a virtual machine. Okay. Now we've got uh, FWPD uh, repository from the current uh, commit. And now we are installing the FWPD dependencies. Uh, some of FWPD dependencies need to be built from the source because they are not uh, already in the upstream. So uh, you'll see that in a moment. 
Um, also, we are uh, updating the uh, package to the la uh, latest repository to just have the latest, uh, the fresh, the fresh, most fresh uh, ports. Okay. And now uh, we are cloning the uh, ports to the free, uh, free BSD VM. Uh, we are cloning this because we need to uh, have our uh, fork of the ports because, as I said, we are currently uh, in the pr uh, upstream process. Uh, as you can see, um, now we are building the um, dependencies of the uh, FWPD. Uh, as I said, some dependencies are not in the upstream, so we are building it uh, from the source. Uh, we've got libjcat, uh, we've got uh, libxmlb. Uh, and now, uh, the FWPD is installed for the first time. Uh, we are uh, compiling. Uh, we are compilation um, FWPD twice because uh, for the first time we are creating the package info file, uh, which contains uh, information about uh, every file that is installed in this commit. And then we are clearing the uh, build and we are building the package once again to have the, all uh, files in the package that could be uploaded to the uh, GitHub. Okay. Uh, I will fast forward that. Um, okay. And now you will see the uh, clearing. Of... Okay. Mm, now you'll see the cleaning of the build process. As you can see, we are setting the uh, package policed uh, file. And once again, we are uh, compiling the FWPD. So let's fast forward that. And now uh, we are creating the package. And then we'll install, uh, check if the package is installing uh, properly. And if it is, mm, it will be uploaded to the GitHub. Okay, you can see make install. Um, everything works fine. The uh, binary artifact is uploaded. Okay, let's go back to the presentation. Okay, so now I will tell you uh, some words about the FWPD functionalities. I will start with uh, gathering the information about possible updates. Um, so to update the device, we need to know exactly what hardware is connected to our PC and if there are possible updates. For this purposes, we are using free FWPD comments, get device, which lists um, devices connected to the our PC, refresh, which um, downloads the metadata uh, metadata info from the LVFS, and get updates, which lists possible updates for devices connected to our PC. Um, so, um, there was a problem with updating WPD metadata info. 
uh, about possible updates. It was caused uh, by memfd create, which uh, was not available uh, in FreeBSD uh, 12.2, uh, but it is already added in FreeBSD 13.0. Um, we've changed that, um, and now FWPD is checking if the function is available. If not, it emulates uh, in-file memory file by unlinked temporary file. Um, here is the patch which changes this. Okay. Um, as you can see now, uh, we've got FWPD manager get device. Uh, that's the comment which lists uh, um, devices connected to VPC and supported by the FWPD. Um, and it lists uh, current version. It uh, gives us some summary information about uh, a device. And uh, it gives us uh, information about install duration. The most important thing is GUI IDs. Uh, which give us information uh, what um, exact device is it. And uh, GUI IDs are used uh, by the FWPD plugins to uh, make sure that this device is a um, specific device which could be updated with uh, some firmware that is given from the OM. Uh, and um, with uh, that is generated uh, differently from uh, FWPD plugin to FWPD plugin. Uh, for example, GIDs uh, in UFI uh, are read from the S30. Uh, in uh, for the USB devices, it's generated from the USB information given by the manufacturer. Okay, the next thing is uh, FWPD Manager Refresh. Uh, as you can see, uh, it fetch uh, metadata about possible updates from the content delivery network. Uh, and also it fetch signature, which uh, is used to check if metadata that was downloaded uh, is trustworthy. And uh, if uh, metadata is uh, downloaded successfully, it shows if there are uh, supported device and if there are possible updates. Okay, now we've got FWPD Manager get updates. Mm, as you can see, it lists uh, device uh, as it does um, uh, FWPD Manager get device, and uh, it also lists possible updates. Mm, okay, so now we can go to the updating um, USB devices. So our first step uh, in the updating devices uh, was updating USB devices. Mm, we want to enable uh, updates for uh, color hack, that is uh, colorimeter. That that is our test device, which which we use to uh, develop uh, every update uh, for USB device. And uh, we've encountered a problem with uh, FreeBSD Leap USB. Uh, which uh, prevented uh, USB de uh, devices from returning to operating system after reboot. FWPD uses the libg uh, USB library, which is glib uh, wrapper uh, around a lib USB. Uh, the usual usual follow flow of an update is as follow. Uh, the first step is uh, issuing the command to the device to enter bootloader mode. And in the case of color hack two, uh, that is a custom HID based flashing mode. 
then we are writing an update uh, to the device. And if it's successful, we are going back, back to the running mode, runtime mode to the operating system. And our pro uh, problem occurred after the first step. Okay. So uh, we were unable to reattach the device to the host uh, after issuing the command to reset the device um, to get back to the normal operation. Um, and operating system does not recognize this device and um, it could not uh, reattach it. Uh, it just stay as gone um, because uh, libgusb uses Leap USB asynchronous uh, API. FWPD would close the device after an update before all events ha has had been processed. Uh, even uh, processing such event, um, Leap USB would detach the device is gone and mark it with a device is gone flag. And this meant that on all future requests, leap, uh, leap USB would fail with leap USB error, no device error. So we fixed that by clearing uh, device gone flag. In the case uh, the device was open after re a reattach uh, to allow a new transaction. And now we've got the next demo. <clears throat> so we are updating a uh, color hack. We are logging to the free, uh, free BSD. Uh, the uh, WPD is asking us if we want to update the device. We are saying yes. Uh, the, uh, the, um, the update is downloaded and it's decompressed, verified, and installed. And as we can see in the end, everything works fine. The firmware is updated. Okay, so let's go back to the presentation. Okay, the second uh, firmware update uh, that we want to uh, provide was UFI device firmware update from our perspective uh, and perspective of security. This uh, UFI updates were crucial to implementing and this functionality was uh, our priority for FreeBSD. So uh, there were a couple parts that had to be implemented to make it work. Uh, we need to add the UFI S30 table support that was lack in FreeB uh, FreeBSD. Uh, also FreeBSD FIVAR backend for FWPD uh, needed to be implemented. Um, the FIVR support uh, on Linux is implemented via a CFS interface, while uh, FreeBSD has a C AP, and that needs to be implemented to WPD. Um, also, BSD, uh, we need to add uh, BSD support in FWPD and also adding uh, support for uh, UFI update capsule plugin in FWPD for FreeBSD. Okay, so what is UFI S30? S30 is a, a FI a system resource table, uh, which is a standard interface for firmware updates available uh, since UFI 2.5. It exposes uh, among data information about the currently installed firmware version and status of the uh, last update attempt. Uh, it's used by the FWPD for the detection, matching, and uh, giving information about available uh, updates. Support for this table was missing in FreeBSD, and we've added uh, with in this 
this patch. <clears throat> okay. Mm, so LWPD applies uh, Fiber updates by installing a small FI binary along with the update capsule into ASP uh, and setting uh, the FI boot next variable to point it. So uh, the machine reboots and launches the FE binary, which uh, then calls uh, update capsule, which tells the UFI to apply uh, the capsule. And the actual flashing is handled by the UFI implementation itself. Uh, this requires FEVAR support and FreeBSD has a different uh, programmatic AP. So uh, this support uh, needed to be added in uh, FWPD. Furthermore, uh, since FreeBSD has a disk management AP that differs slightly from the Linux standards. Uh, these supports also need to be added. Okay, and now we've got uh, UFI demo. So as before, we are logging to the um, FreeBSD. And we are updating our firmware. Uh, once again, the FWPD is asking us if we want to update the firmware. Um, we are using the, uh, um, once again, we are downloading the firmware. The firmware is uh, installed by the uh, UFI capsule. And as you can see, mm, the, uh, the capsule is downloaded. Mm, the uh, FEVAR boot next is set. And uh, at the end of the process, FWPD is asking us if we want to restart now. Um, so let's back to the presentation. If we click yes, we are just rebooting. And we can see the update process, which is handled by the UFI implementation. Uh, and if everything is working properly, we can see the um, that firmware update is successful and the UFI will reboot us to the operating system. Okay, so um, thank you uh, for your time and for your attention. If you want to contact us, you can uh, reach us under these links. I also like to send many thanks to our engineers who make WPD for BSD possible, um, especially for Michal, Sergey, and Pavel. And it's time for the questions. Thank you so much. Um, there are a couple of questions on the uh, on the shared notices, but I, I would like to ask a question first. You know, uh, you said you were working on package source packages, but I haven't found any. Have you upstreamed them yet? Um, we've got the package source package in our fork. Uh, I can link that. Um... <laughs> Just give me a second. Um, it should be in our fork um, on freebie on GitHub. Um, okay. Uh, it's, it's, it's. Yeah, LWPD package source. Here it is, and it's not. Like here, the AP. Okay, we've got it and have WPD BSD. Okay, it's uh, a little bit VAP, but you can look at that. Okay, and that's a few comments. 
Um, yes. Okay. Um, I linked that in public chat. Uh, Thank you. What was the main reason for dependency hell uh, when trying to package on FWPD on package source? Uh, we will use package source for uh, NetBSD uh, because it's native uh, for NetBSD. But uh, when I was trying to install the package source on uh, Open BSD and uh, Dragonfly BSD. There were problem with the dependencies that needs to be built from the source, and some dependencies there were. Um, uh, we want uh, huh. some dependencies do not build as expected, and uh, that gave us uh, so much more work to. Uh, fix that dependencies than uh, just using the native uh, package manager. And that was the main reason to use native uh, for native uh, package managers and not only the package source. Okay, short notes. Uh, how high is the risk to uh, break brick hardware using FWPD on FreeBSD at this stage? Uh, okay, so um, if you are using the UFI update, uh, there is a low risk to break your hardware because you are only downloading the archives that uh, that are uh, deployed by the manufacturer and all the flashing work uh, is done by the uh, on the all the flashing work is done by the UFI. Uh, is uh, the cheap uh, test device uh, that uh, um, one can be used uh, to uh, test safely? And repeatedly, uh, we are using Color Hug. Mm, that's a uh, Richard Hughes uh, device, which is maintainer of the uh, who is maintainer of the FWPD. Um, I have no idea how much uh, it costs, but I will link you this device. Okay, that's open source. Uh, open source hardware, uh, which could be. I'm not sure if it's available in the say, but um, you can just build it yourself. But uh, okay, uh. Website seems to be uh, okay. What is the status for other BSDs? I will answer uh, first to this question. Uh, the status for other BSDs. Uh, currently, we are building the FWPD on every BSD um, operating system. Uh, the um, other uh, functionalities of uh, FWPD. Uh, are not tested on the Dragonfly OpenBSD and NetBSD. Uh, we are aware of that, uh, of uh, differences between uh, FreeBSD and other BSDs. So um, the main uh, problem with uh, UFI um, updates is that uh, SRT support needs to be provided for every operating system. Uh, and uh, we need to upstream the uh, driver that will uh, enable the stables in the uh, Dragonfly BSD, OpenBSD, and NetBSD. Mm, for the uh, USB, um, for the USB updates, it should be so much easier. And we just need to make some proof of concept work and just try to flash our devices and uh, just look if they are working correctly. Uh, they may happen some problems like uh, LibUSB problem in FreeBSD that may, be, uh, may need to be solved by us or uh, by us and community. 
and that's uh, the current status for the rest of uh, BSDs. Mm. Okay, I will go back to the question of uh, chip device. Mm. Mm. I will check that and I will give you uh, somehow uh, information about this. Um, the easiest way to check if you have so, such device is just looking at LVFS. Mm. And just trying to Google mm, devices that you have. Okay, yeah. Um, okay. So here is the LVFS service, and you can just uh, search Primer for your devices. Uh, and make uh, just look at uh, this and just try to search some firmware for your device. Um, is there a Qt based front uh, front end yet? No, there is no Qt based front end. Uh, and uh, I guess uh, that is question from Pro Bono. Uh, okay. Mm, is uh, any information collected and sent to the server telemetry? Which information about user devices collected uh, and what is shared with the firmware vendor? <coughs> yes, uh, there are information that are sent to the server telemetry. Uh, mm, Every user which is downloading the firmware from the uh, LVFS is sending the information about that he has this device, and uh, that uh, that informations are just uh, uh, um, that informations do not uh, are not connected with uh, specific user. So we are just sending the information that. Uh, you have uh, this device and it could not be connected with you. Mm. Um, the vendor got the information if the uh, update was successful and vendor ha has information uh, about uh, which uh, version uh, have you run and uh, which ver version uh, you update. And it could be used to uh, just um, set the stable version because when you are uh, updating your firmware, if everything is working fine, so um, the vendor can set this uh, firmware version as uh, stable. Okay. Uh, when do you expect to land packages for uh, FreeBSD 12 and 13? We, uh, we are currently in the uh, upstream, uh, uh, in the upstream process. So it will be, <laughs> uh, I could not give you a precise date, but, but uh, we want to do it uh, until the end of the Q3. Mm, yeah, mm, firmware downgrades are possible. Yes, uh, firmware downgrades are possible. Uh, okay, and I guess we've got uh, our older devices without UFI able to use FWPD to update their BIOSes. Uh, yes, mm, they are available uh, to update their BIOSes. Mm, it all depends by uh the bias it runs uh, for example the um, core boot bias uh is um, is updated with the plugin called flashroom uh, that use flashroom tool to uh update the bias but um, Currently, uh, we are not uh, guaranteed that uh, this uh, flash on plugin will work with uh, FreeBSD and other BSDs. Mm, we are now focusing only on the uh, USB devices and UFI updates. Mm, 
will have uh, will have WPD work with uh, known uh, x86 architectures, assuming there is firmware updates available. Yes, uh, it will work. Okay. If... Uh, okay. Mm, do we have any more? Questions? I think KD Discovery support. There's a question about support for non x86 architectures. Did you? Mm, yes, oh, there were something. Okay. Uh, have you had any experience, success with RAID, uh, control, uh, firmware? Uh, no, we, uh, thus, uh, we did not, uh, try to update the RAID controllers, uh, firmware. But I guess, uh, if you have, uh, some questions, you can always, uh, create an issue at, um fwpd fwpd mm, on github like let me mm, let me link that and so here are the maintainers which uh got uh, much more experience than me in fwpd and uh they can uh, answer most of your questions and um, um, I guess uh, there are some uh, possible updates uh, for write controllers in the LVFS, but uh, I cannot precisely answer your question. Um, thank you very much uh, for your time and for your attention.